Hi everybody and welcome to DNS in detail. Let's begin. What is DNS? DNS or domain name system provides a simple way for us to communicate with devices on the internet without remembering complex numbers. Much like every house has a unique address for sending mail directly to it, every computer on the internet has its own unique address to communicate with it called an IP address. An IP address looks like um, uh, the one that we see on the screen right now, uh, which is four sets of uh, digits uh, ranging from 0 to, to uh, 255, separated by a period, right? So when you want to visit a website, it's not exactly convenient to remember this complicated set of numbers, and that's where DNS can help. So instead of remembering the IP address that we see right here, you can remember tryhackme.com instead. Okay, so what does uh, DNS stand for? And that is Domain Name System. Great, and now let's move on to the next task, which is Domain Hierarchy. TLD or top level domain. A TLD is the most right hand part of a domain name. So for example, the tryhackme.com TLD is .com. There are two types of TLD, GTLD, generic top level domain, and CCTLD or country code top level domain. Historically, a GTLD was meant to tell the user the domain name's purpose. For example, a.com will be for commercial purposes, .org for an organization, .edu for education, and .gov for government. And a CCTLD was used for geographical purposes. For example, .ca for sites based in Canada, .co.uk for sites based in uh, the United Kingdom, and so on. Due to such demand, there is an influx of new GTLDs ranging from .online, .club, .website, .biz, and so many more. For a full list of over 2,000 TLDs, you guys can check out the link that uh, you see on the screen right now. So, second level domain. Uh, taking tryhackme.com as an example, uh, the .com part is the TLD and tryhackme is the second a level domain. When registering a domain name, the second level domain is limited to 63 characters plus the TOD and can only use A through Z and 0 through 9 and hyphens and cannot start or end with hyphens or have consecutive hyphens. Uh, subdomain. A subdomain sits on the left hand side of the second level domain using a period to separate it. For example, in the name uh, admin dot tryhackme.com, the admin part is the subdomain. A subdomain name has the same creation uh, restrictions as a second level domain, being limited to six, uh, 63 uh, characters and can only use A through Z, 0 through 9 and hyphens, and cannot start or end with hyphens or have consecutive hyphens. You can use multiple subdomains split with periods to create longer names, such as jupiter.servers.tryhackme.com, but the length must be kept to 253 characters or less. There is no limit to the number of subdomains you can create for your domain name. And now let's answer uh, the questions. What is the maximum length of a subdomain? And that will be 63. So we type in 63. Which of the following characters cannot be used in a subdomain? And that will be the underscore. So, underscore. What is the maximum length of a domain name? And that will be 253. And the last question, what type of TLD is .co.uk? And that will be a CCTLD, okay? So we type in CC. T L D and submit and we are correct. So now let's move on to the next uh, task, which is uh, record types. DNS record types. DNS isn't just for websites though, and multiple types of DNS records exist. We'll go over some of the most common ones that you're likely to come across. 
a record. These records resolve to IPv4 addresses, for example, the one that we see right here on the screen. Uh, then we have the quad A record. Uh, these records resolve to IPv6 addresses, for example, the, the one that we see right here. And then we have CNAME record or canonical name record. Uh, these records resolve to another domain name. For example, TryHackMe's online shop has the subdomain name store.tryhackme.com, which returns a CNAME record shops.shopify.com. Another DNS request would then be made to shops.shopify.com uh, to work out the IP address. Then we have the MX record or mail exchange record. Uh, these records resolve to the address of the servers that handle the email for the domain you are querying. For example, an MX record response for tryhackme.com would look something like uh, this alt one dot aspmx.l dot google dot com. These records also come with a priority flag. This tells the client in which order to try the servers. This is perfect for if the main server goes down and email needs to be sent to a backup server. And then we have the TXT record or text record. Uh, TXT records are free text fields where any text based data can be stored. TXT records have multiple uses, but some common ones can be to list uh, servers that have the authority to send an email on behalf of the domain. This can help in the battle against spam and spoofed email. They can also be used to verify ownership of the domain name when signing up for third-party services. And now let's answer the questions. Uh, what type of record will be used uh, to uh, advise where to send email? And that will be MX record. So we type in MX. Uh, and then what type of uh, what type of uh, record handles IPv6 addresses and that will be quad a record so we type in a a a a and we are correct so now let's move on to the next task which is making a request What happens when you make a DNS request? And we have five steps here. And we also have a diagram that we can look at while we read about each uh, each step, okay? So let's begin with the first step. So when you request a domain name, your computer first checks its local cache to see if you've previously looked up the address uh, recently. If not, a request to your recursive DNS server will be made. Step two. A recursive DNS server is usually provided by your ISP, but you can also choose your own. This server also has a local cache of recently looked up domain names. If a result is found locally, this is sent back to your computer and your request, uh, and your request ends here. This is common for popular and heavily requested services such as Google, Facebook and Twitter. If the request cannot be found locally, a journey begins to find the correct answer, starting with the Internet's root DNS servers. Step 3. The root servers uh, act as the DNS backbone of the Internet. Their job is to redirect you to the correct top-level domain server, uh, depending on your request. If, for example, you request www.trihackme.com, the root server will recognize the top-level domain of .com and refer you to the correct TLD server that deals with .com addresses. Okay, and uh, step four, the TLD uh, server holds records for where to find the um, authoritative uh, server to answer the DNS request. The authoritative server is often also known as the name server for the domain. For example, the name server for triacme.com is uh, kip.ns.cloudflare.com and uma.ns.cloudflare.com. You often find multiple name servers for a domain name to act as a backup in case one goes down. Okay, and now step five, an uh, authoritative DNS server is the server that is responsible for uh, storing the DNS records for a particular domain name and where any updates, updates to your domain name DNS records would be made. Uh, depending on the record type, the DNS record is then sent back to the recursive DNS, the DNS server, where a local copy, copy will be cached for future requests and then relayed back to the original client that made the request. 
DNS records all come with a, a uh, TTL or time to live value. This value is a number represented in seconds that the response should be saved for locally until you have to look it up again. Cache saves on having to make a DNS request every time you communicate with a server. Okay, and now let's answer the questions. Uh, what field uh, specifies how long a DNS record should be cached for? And that will be TTL. Uh, so TTL. Okay, what type of DNS server is usually provided by your ISP? And that will be recursive. Uh, so recursive. Okay, and what type of server holds all the records for a domain? Uh, and that will be author authoritative. Okay, so let's type that in. Uh, let's see, like this, and we submit, and we are correct. And now let's move on to the next uh, task uh, and see what's going on there. Okay, using the website on the right, we can build requests to make DNS queries and view the results. The website will also show you the uh, command you need to run on your own computer if you wish to make the requests uh, yourself. Okay, let's see. Okay, uh, and by the way, uh, if you uh, if you wonder what uh, NS lookup is, it stands for uh, name uh, server lookup, and it's a command line tool we use to query DNS servers for information on IP addresses, domain names, and other uh, DNS records. And and we're actually going to do some of these uh, of those things in uh, this uh, task. So so yeah. So let's begin. So what is the C name of uh, shop dot website dot THM. Uh, and for that, we need to first uh, choose CNAME and then type shop, okay, and then click on uh, send uh, DNS request. And we can find the answer right here. So the answer is shops.myshopify.com. Okay, so let's uh, copy that. and paste it here and submit. Okay, what is the value of the uh, txt record of website.thm? Uh, In here, we need to choose uh, txt and then just click on send DNS request. And our answer is right here. So we can just copy that. And paste it right here and we submit and the next question is what is the numerical priority value for the MX record and we can just go up here again choose MX again you don't have to type anything here and just click on send uh, DNS request and our answer is right here so 30 so let's type that in And the last question, what is the IP address for the A record of www.website.thm? And here you can just uh, first choose A and then you can type www, send DNS request. Did I send it? Yeah, I did actually. And the, um, the answer is right here. This is the IP address. So let's copy that and paste and there you go we are done with this room okay everybody uh, if you enjoyed the video found it helpful uh, please give it a thumbs up I would really really appreciate that and of course subscribe to the channel for more videos on try hack me okay everybody talk to you next time